I will provide you with repair tips for the indoor circuit board of a higher mini split air conditioner. I will explain the different voltages present in its SMPS or switched mode power supply circuit and where potential faults might occur. Understanding the voltages is crucial because the circuit operates primarily due to these voltages. You can check the surrounding components, if the voltages are present, and the circuit still doesn't work. By doing so, there is a chance that you can fix your circuit board. Whenever you check the circuit board, always start by checking the electricity on these main electric terminals. This will help you determine if there is any issue with the voltages on the terminals. If the voltages are not correct, the problem with your circuit board might be resolved right here. After that, check the black and white wires. The black wire is connected with connector number 52, which is the line wire. The white wire is connected to connector number 21, and this is the neutral wire. After these wires, there is a fuse installed. If this fuse blows, the circuit board will not power on at all. So, always check the fuse in the circuit first. Next, check the ZNR or zinc oxide varistor, which is connected to both neutral and phase. If it becomes an open circuit, the circuit board will not power on either. And because of this, the fuse may also burn out repeatedly. So, also check this in the circuit, as it is installed to protect the circuit from high voltages. After that, there are capacitors and a line filter. If there is a wire break in the line filter, then this component can also cause problems. Electricity won't pass through properly. After that, you'll see some capacitors installed. Here, the component that is likely to fail next is the NTC thermistor. If this component fails for any reason, electricity may still not pass through properly. After the line filter, there is a rectification circuit installed. Often, in these rectifiers, one or two diodes can become faulty when exposed to high voltages in the circuit. It's important to check them with a multimeter. Alternatively, you can replace these four diodes. If this issue exists in the circuit, there is a good chance that fixing them will restore the circuit's functionality. Then, there is a capacitor labeled with the number E7. This capacitor should have voltages between 310 to 320 volts across its pins. After rectification, DC voltages of 320 volts are present here. If voltages are present here, then it means that your circuit is working perfectly fine up to this point. Its filtration system is functioning well, rectification is occurring in the circuit, and voltages are reaching this capacitor. Despite this, if the circuit is still not turning on, the issue could potentially lie with the switching IC. This IC is numbered 9 in the circuit and its specific number is a 6059H. If this IC is faulty, it could indeed cause problems with the circuit board. Apart from this, there is also a resistor installed here numbered 161. This resistor can also develop faults because it's approximately 1.5 ohms, functioning somewhat like a fuse. If this resistor becomes faulty, the switching IC won't turn on, and thus the circuit board won't power on. Along with this, it's important to check these two diodes as well. If they are open or short-circuited, it could also cause issues with this circuit board. After this, the chopper circuit comes into play. If the chopper encounters an open circuit or short circuit for any reason, it can cause problems in its DC to DC electricity conversion. Now, if the circuit is working perfectly up to this point, let me tell you where you need to check voltages. There is a capacitor labeled as CY6 installed here, and you need to check voltages across its pins. You should get 15 volts at this capacitor. If 15 volts are present here, then the system is working perfectly fine. However, if these voltages are not present, then you'll need to check the components nearby. Here, diode number 8, resistor number 019, and capacitor number 009 are mounted. So, you'll need to check these components. These components are also accompanied by a Zener diode. These components are interconnected in both parallel and series configurations. And these are the components that generate the 15 volts for the CY6 capacitor. Therefore, if any issue arises with these components, the circuit will encounter problems accordingly. Here, an optocoupler is installed, designated as IC10 in the circuit. Alongside this optocoupler, capacitor C010 is installed. There should be 15 volts here. If 15 volts are not present, check the components around it. Additionally, 15 volts should also be present at capacitor number 7. If 15 volts are not present here either, check all the nearby components, as any faulty component among them could be causing the issue. Now let me tell you about another capacitor labeled as E204 in the circuit. There should be 12 volts present across its pins. If 12 volts are not present at this capacitor, it means there might be a fault in a component preceding this capacitor in the circuit. Therefore, you should check the diodes, resistors, etc., 
that I mentioned earlier, as any of these components could potentially be faulty. After this, 5 volts should be present on the IC, which is a 5 volt voltage regulator. In this circuit, this IC is numbered 5, and the voltage regulator itself is numbered 7805. Its first pin, which is the input pin, should have 12 volts. The center pin is connected to the ground, and the left side pin is the output pin, where you should get 5 volts. These 5 volts should then appear on capacitor number C22. After that, there are two more capacitors where you should also find 5 volts, and 5 volts should also be present on the TVS. These TVS or transient voltage suppression diodes are used to protect electronic circuits from voltage spikes and surges, and this has been installed because these 5 volts are entering the low voltage circuit. So check all the components as I told you, and I hope that if the problem is with the SMPS circuit, you will be able to fix it easily. I will explain the rest of the low side circuit in the next video. If you are willing to support the channel, you can buy me coffee, for that, visit Patreon. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch our next videos. And subscribe. Thank you.